Exponential growth and decay, right? We've looked at the concept. The concept is saying, hang on, if I look at some sort of quantity, so it can be a population, it can be bacteria, when it starts growing, right, the rate at which it's growing is proportional to how many of that thing there are. Like, and again, we shouldn't be surprised that this makes sense, right? With populations, right, the more people there are, the faster that that population is going to grow, okay? There's a problem, though. What was that equation for exponential growth and decay? A P equals A to the power KT. That's the uh, kind of general equation for exponential growth. Graphically, I haven't focused too much on this, but graphically we've seen what this looks like as time passes. What's happening? Oh, I think I used Q, sorry. Q usually. Q, right? As time passes, what happens to this kind of quantity it grows very quickly, right? And obviously, because we're using t as a variable time, we only kind of assume after t greater than or equal to zero, because you know time, we don't go into negative time. Okay. The one that I haven't really focused much on is exponential decay. Now, for exponential decay, the equation is slightly different. Decay, we're thinking about things getting smaller. We incorporate a negative. Graphically, how does this change it? Right, so when we're talking about things decaying, they start off decaying very quickly, but then they kind of fall off. The rate isn't as quick anymore, right? So, and again, thinking about your manipulations in the Cartesian plane, if I have a negative attached to this t variable, it's going to be affecting something here. You remember that that's a, how would you describe it? Reflection? Yeah. In the vertical axis, or you know, q axis here, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's our exponential decay model. In this form, as time passes, what is this value going to approach? Zero. Zero. You can put in a really, really large value for t, and it's going to approach zero. This function is going to approach zero. Okay? And again, we've looked at situations. When we have looked at decay, we looked at isotopes, right? Uh, the mass of a isotope of time. Okay? Um, one other example I gave at the beginning was something that's cooling over time. You know, you, you heat something up, you take a cup of tea, heat it up, it's really hot. It's a bit, it's a bit hot. <laughs> okay. But <laughs> it's a bit too hot. But here, right, this cup of tea, what should this be approaching according to this model? Right, okay, so you can see the problem, right? We present a mathematical idea, and the mathematical idea is that things decay according to this equation, or things cool according to this equation, and James is pointing out, hang on, well, according to this model, it should approach zero, but that doesn't really make sense because that's saying that, okay, as this thing cools, it's gonna get colder than what's around it, yeah, room temperature, which is, I don't know what that is, maybe like 23, yeah, something like 23 degrees, right? So there's the problem. What's the solution? Well, the solution is modified exponential growth and decay. How do we modify it? How could I change this graph so that, no, instead of approaching zero, it's approaching room temperature? Can you do like, say it's room temperature, like yeah. 23 plus growth. Okay, so instead, right, what do I really want to do with this graph? I want this graph not to approach zero anymore, which is where the current asymptote is. Oh I want it to approach, oh, that was a bad graph, <laughs> let me go again. I want to approach 23, which would be somewhere here. There's my new asymptote. And we've shifted it up. And you've looked at shifts before. We know to shift something vertically, right, we just add a number in front, we add a constant. This is our form for modified exponential growth in today. We have a constant in front now. It could be 23, it could be any other value, okay? But that's this idea. We're changing the current exponential growth and decay model so that we can account for other situations, right? And the more complex the situations get, the more variables we have to incorporate. But let's, let's get this down first, right? So we have our general form. Q is equal to B plus AE to the KT, okay? Now just to kind of um, emphasize, right, if we have growth, we have um, e to the power kt, if we have decay, we have e to the power negative kt. So let's look at the general form of growth first. This is our general form. Okay. 
But like with last time, we're not just interested in the original equation, we really are interested in the rate of what's happening here, right? So what can we do with this? Well, let's find the derivative. dQ dt. Now remember, what does b represent here? b represents some constant. b represents some constant here. Yes. Sorry. Yeah, this is for growth because you've got positive. Decay? Yeah, because remember the graphs are different, right? Because if we want it to be growing exponentially, we want some really large value going up. If we want it to be decaying, we start at a large value and then we drop off very quickly and then over time it will approach some value. Okay? So we've got a positive growth. Go to your James, sorry. When you speak KQ. KQ. How did you get that? Uh, well, B becomes zero, mm -hmm. and it's just like the original one. Okay, so let's differentiate first. Before we do any kind of substitutions, right? Let's differentiate. So if I differentiate this, what do you say we get? We get K, mm -hmm. um, then we can abbreviate it to Q, or you do it fully, which is AE mm -hmm. to the KT. And so what James is suggesting is, hang on, I've seen A to the KT before, that's just Q. Mm -hmm. Right? So we can make that substitution. Do we agree? So what James is suggesting is, hang on, this is very similar to the normal exponential growth. Right? Where we saw this before, this was just Q, we can just substitute it in. Why can't we not do it? <laughs> you guys know me too well, don't you? Look very carefully. What does Q represent in this question? Okay? Q, yeah, right. Q's actually changed now, right? We're not looking at the standard exponential growth, okay? We've added a constant. Seems like a very subtle change, and it is. But it means that we can't substitute Q in here directly anymore. What we can do. We can do a bit of rearranging, right? Right. We can, all we need to do is to say Q minus B, take the B to the other side, it's just a constant, equals AE to the KT. And so now dQ dt is equal to K outside of Q minus B from this section over here. That's our relationship between the original expression and its derivative. Okay? So I'm saying that now we're not just relating to the quantity, we're also looking at the quantity and some other constant. In this situation, maybe it's a room temperature and the current temperature of the tea. Right? What's the difference between them? That's what our derivative is based on. Okay? Jot that down for me. Now something that's interesting, right? Before we had A as our initial quantity, but now what's our initial quantity? Well, if t equals to zero, q would equal to b is not changed at all, plus a e to the zero, which is just b plus a, a plus b, right? So that's something else to consider, right? Again, subtle difference, but something to note, okay? Your initial kind of quantity is going to be the sum of these two here, if we have exponential growth, right?